Hey guys, RC here, back with Club 4, Episode 1. Well, as you can see, we have moved clubs. Now, the big question, I left that blank in the thumbnail. We've moved to Brazil. So, I, uh, I cheated a little bit. Not really, but I cheated a little bit. Uh, you know, I'll be honest with you. So I went ahead like three weeks from the last episode. I had applied for several jobs. And this particular club basically came out and said, I got, I got an email saying that the club wanted to hire me, but could not afford the buyout. Because I was still under contract for another year with Sarah Largo. So I had a meeting with the board and I asked if they would reduce the buyout to allow me to move. And they said, no, get your ass back to work. And so I said, well, you know what? So I saved the game at that point. I went back and I reloaded the previous save right after last episode. And I kind of restarted. And what I did is I went ahead and notified the club that I was going to leave at the end of the current season, that I was going to resign. And, you know, that way I left at the end of the year. Well, what I didn't take into account, I went ahead and applied for all the same jobs that I had done the first time and immediately got called in front of the director. And he was livid that I had applied for jobs. So I guess because I didn't advance a day, my resignation notification hadn't made it to his desk, even though he's the one that I had to talk with, I guess. And uh, so he basically, uh, I'm going to fire you or you can qu resign. So I went ahead and resigned. And then it was real funny. Then I advanced a day. And they came back and they wanted to renegotiate my contract to try to get me to stay because of my notice that I was going to resign at the end of the season. So a little disconnect in the coding there, I think. But uh, anyway, so I went ahead with that. I went ahead that I resigned immediately and we progressed on. I had several interviews uh, I was approached by a club in the second division of Argentina uh, that I had not applied for. They approached me for an interview. So I interviewed with like four, four or five clubs, uh, didn't get any offers on four of them. And then I did get a job offer, which ended up being by the same team. So that worked out, but you know, I guess that worked out the way it should have. So we've made our way from Uruguay. Uh, and I really enjoyed my time at Cerro Largo uh, up until the uh, director lost his shit. Uh, but we have now moved uh, to the north northern coast of Brazil. So it uh, looks like the state of Para is up here. And uh, we are in the district of Bellum. I believe it's called the district of Bellum. Uh, the state is Para, the capital is Bellum, so the, this is this capital city. Uh, it's a major port city, uh, as you can see, going out into the Atlantic Ocean. That's right. Uh, I had to kind of get my bearings here for just a minute. Uh, so we're in Bellum, and we'll zoom in here. Uh, just looking at some notes down here. It's in the it's the gateway to the lower Amazon region. So this is the entrance to the Amazon River here, right? So the lower Amazon would be down here. By the way, does anybody know how the forest fires in the Amazon are doing? Just curious. I haven't heard uh, anything about them in a while. So it looks like there's a couple of different I don't know if these are cities, but Marumbaya, Ananidua, Benavides. So anyway, uh, let's zoom in here a little bit. So we are in the Bellum area. The Federal University of Para. And I need to find out where the stadium is at. Because I don't know. There's the airport. 
So anyway, let's see. I want to go here. So we play at the the Stadium Leonidas Sodre de Castro. The Stadium of Leonidas Castro. All right. Formerly known as the Stadium de Caruza. Owned by the uh, Paysandu Sport Club, which is what PAY stands for. And actually, it doesn't look like a horrible stadium. 1978, 45,000. Let's, uh, let's click that and open it. It's in the San Braz, Sal, Sal Braz neighborhood. All right, so let's go back here and see if we can find. Okay, there's Sal Braz right there. Right there. There it is. So let's zoom in on that up here. Looks like another stadium down there. I wonder who's here. Interesting. Doesn't look as nice as ours. Well, I'll be right back. Hush. I just started recording, so I'll call her in a little while. Go back to bed. All right, sorry about that. So let's see, right here. So let's click on that. And let's click on that. Uh, it's a pretty nice ground. I mean, it's not horrible. It's not, you know, it's not a Premier League stadium, but it's not horrible, right? So it looks like we've got a little covered seating here. Um, can't tell. It looks like we have two, two end zone bleachers. Yeah, there's a little. That's where they would have the football barbecue, football barbecue over here, and and the burger van, right? As Loki calls it. And then we have two side stadiums. That's interesting. That's from the outside. So you have fencing around the stadium and you still get graffiti. Okay. But, you know, we got some neon lights. Cool. Uh, I'm guessing that uh, they've set off fireworks, I hope, and that they haven't tried to burn the place down. Uh, large crowd like that like that a lot uh let's see now that's out of focus but it does look a little empty are they there oh they've raised some silverware Woo -hoo. that's good let's get a close-up of some of that graffiti all right well some of the awards and, and silverware that they've won unfortunately i do not speak Historia, I'm guessing that's Spanish. Guessing. All right. Yeah, you know. It's not it's not a hundred percent capacity. There's an aerial view of uh the stadium in the city. So, you know, sits right on the edge of the highway there. One of their one of their legends. Need to mow the grass. This looks like when they were building the stadium, so new construction. It was built in 70, well, this must have been a renovation because the stadium was built in 75, was it not? Built in 1918. Okay, so yeah, real old. 16,200.
trying to see if they've it's the oldest stadium of the Paris State. Interesting. There's another shot of it from one of the high rises in the background. I guess if you had a good enough pair of binoculars, you could watch some of the game. That is not that stadium. So I'm guessing that is not accurate. Yeah, we're back to here. This there's the overhang area. So you got a little bit of, you know, I don't know if the, this is for the press or private box seats, but you know, not too bad. So this is just kind of the get to know the club. I have to get in. We've got about two months till the start of next season, but I went ahead and started right away so I could start transfers and what have you. So got a little scoreboard up in the corner. So I guess this is one of those stadiums that does have the big TV in the corner. So kudos to Sports Interactive for the realism there. Uh, let's see. So I think we've pretty much seen everything. Again, that does not appear to be the same stadium. I don't know what stadium that is. Because I don't think yeah there's no way that's the same stadium i'm gonna guess that would be not correct all right there's a view of the grandstand from the center circle nice it's not a bad little stadium you know and i say little i mean that's actually a lot of seating now what the hell is this looks like some construction going on down there the team buses. Need to relay the pitch there just a little bit. Oh, are, are we getting a look here? So it looks like we may have uh, white and blue kits. Okay. So probably a little similar to Cerro Largo. All right. Let's get into uh, the area of Belim, which is, oh, Portuguese. So evidently they don't speak Spanish, they speak Portuguese. My bad. I am sorry. I did not know they spoke Portuguese there. Because they do speak Spanish in other parts of the country, right? In South America, well, the continent of South America? Yeah, maybe. Founded in 1616 by the King of by the Kingdom of Portugal, the first European colony on the Amazon, but did not become part of Brazil until 1775. I wonder if the American Revolution had something to do with that. Probably not. Probably not. Just the date, you know, was out there. Uh, modern buildings and skyscrapers. Colonial portion retains the charm of tree-filled squares, traditional blue tiles. Interesting. I love, uh, when I went to Spain, uh, um, about a decade or so back, uh, really loved going around and looking at the architecture. Some of the Roman architecture that was there, and it was just uh, known as the metropolis of the brilliant Amazon region or the city of mango trees. Referred to as Balim of Para rather than just Balim. There are evidently several other towns called Balim. All right, two airports, so it's a pretty large city. Uh, let's see, anything interesting? Military expedition, of course. Most things are founded by military expeditions. Sugar trade was important up through the end of the 17th century. Cattle ranching, rice, cotton, and coffee. And then exporting center of the Amazon rubber industry. 1912, the rubber era ended, but it still continues to be the main commercial center of northern Brazil and the entry point to the Amazon Valley. 14 freshwater beaches, nice. Uh, climate. Here we go. Um, so 
Now this is this is in the southern hemisphere, so it's reversed from America. So I've got that reverses the seasons. So where winter is January, February, March, that is actually summer in the southern hemisphere, I believe. I believe that's right. But man, 99 degrees. Well, those are records. Average highs, 80s. So yeah, so our winter months are their summer months, 90 degrees, but not a big variance. I mean, that's only a variance of about three degrees. So that's interesting. Daily average. And I'd be very happy with something below 80 degrees for a daily average every month. Average lows, low 70s. That's actually very nice weather. <laughs> And 15, that's a, well, it's a good bit of rain, you know, I guess the rainy season, 115 inches. I guess you don't worry about drought there. The Amazon, uh, let's see, aluminum, iron ore, other metals, uh, nuts, chiefly Brazil nuts, pineapples, jute, hardwoods. 2.5 almost two and a half million people in the metro region of Belen, which makes up seven cities, which we looked at on the map. Uh, let's see. So, so we have uh, Pardo or Brown, 1.4 million roughly, about 600,000 white people, 156,000 black, and 15,000 Asian or Amerindian people. Cool. So a mixture. Um, I'm wondering, because I don't know the answer to this. So in America, we have white, black, and the Asian, and then brown would be his, what we would consider Hispanic. So that would be Mexican, I guess South American, uh, Central America would all be in that Hispanic, uh, Spanish demographic. Is that... Anybody know if that's what the brown means here? I'm, I'm just guessing it does, but 68% European, 10% African ancestry. Oh, the Cathedral of Say, the Convention of the Amazon, three main football teams, Remo, Paysandu, and Tunaluso. Let's see. Remo, okay, Remo plays at the 17,000 capacity Banal. Paysandu plays at the 16,000 stadium, which is the oldest stadium. And Tuno plays at the much smaller 6,500 seat uh, stadium. Okay, so we're in, the, we're in the second biggest stadium. They do have another park, uh, the Olympic Stadium of Para. I guess that's what that is. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so they can hold large. That would be like Wembley, I guess. So you have each, each club has their own stadium. You've got this one big stadium. It's like Wembley in England, and that would be this stadium. So that's cool. Um, anything else that jumps out? Airports, waterways, distances. Famous people? Oh, Lyoto Machida like him big fan the dragon probably don't recognize any of these names my apologies i watch a lot of cooking shows but don't recognize that name i'm guessing that's not the socrates that i'm thinking of the greek nope definitely not <laughs> Leoto Machida. You know who's not on here? Where's... Pe oh, probably not from that region. I was just thinking South America or Brazil. All right, well, that's cool. And we looked at the pictures and we looked at that. So the name of the club is Paysandu. Paysandu. We just call them Pay. You pay to come watch us play. Uh, there's our crest, the winged foot. 
uh, Paysandu Soccer Club, or Sports Club, my bad. There I go with the soccer again, stupid American. <laughs> and they were in Series C, got relegated out of Series B. So yeah, we've got uh, dark blue and white, and they really could use a little bit of bleach or some Tide uh, on the on the uh, gray away colors. Yeah, I hope not to wear those very often. Ew, don't like that. I do like the home kit, though. I do like that blue. Very nice. Uh, the crest is blue and white with the PSC initials, a winged foot. The team speed goal would never be equaled or surpassed by his opponents because come the flight limits. Above the shield is three stars. Somewhere. Two silver symbolizing the uh, Brazilian Series B of 91 and 2001. And a gold star for the Copa de Camp Campeos in 2002. Okay. And the current squad. That can't be the Tony I'm thinking of. Because he'd be like 60 years old now. And... Everybody in Brazil is named Tiago, right? A lot of guys with one name. All right, well, let's jump into here. I think that's enough of that. So, yes, we're playing in a 15,000 all-seat stadium. Very nice. Uh, we do have uh, – so I am the new coach. Uh, let's take a look. We'll just look at a couple of players. So we have uh, REM is a local rival. Uh, Tuno, Tuna Luso is a local rival. That's one that we just read about. Uh, no legends, a few icons, favored personnel. So our key player is Edwan, center back. Very good physically. Heading's not great, but it's it's serviceable. He can take free kicks, marking, tackling. So he's he seems to be pretty good. 20 years old. $12,000 value. All right. And our hot prospect is, I'm guessing the H is silent, or there's the TH probably has a pronunciation, but Tallison Gabriel. Just a guess. Striker, winger. He can't cross. Passing's not great, but he has finishing, first touch, headings, six foot. Five. That dude is huge. Six five. All right. And he's got a little bit of physical ability, jumping reach. I think we could go uh, high crosses to him, right? Target man. Good finishing. So that's cool. So next episode, we'll get into transfers. We'll look at uh, the roster uh, and get get a look at all that. Uh, two second division championships, one Brazil Champions Cup, one Copa Verde, or five Copa Verdes, uh, one Brazilian North Regional, and 52 Para State Championships. So they've dominated that. Uh, looks like uh, we were relegated out of the second division two seasons ago. And then immediately came back up last year, second place in the from the third division. Uh, we were steady second divisions going back uh, to 2020 after we had come up out of the uh, w winning the third division in 2019. Uh, at one point, 2005, they were in the first division. So uh, that's the goal to get back there. We have uh, natural grass. Uh, let's take a look at uh, general news. Finances are okay. I have not looked at any of this. I just kind of looked at the uh, facilities. I I'd gone to that page to kind of get the stadium name. So let's just kind of breeze through here a little bit. Uh, South America, East Region, Brazil. There's our rivals. Uh, we play the Repa Derby against... Uh, okay, so Pa is... I'm guessing that's para, and RE would be for these guys. P 
Ha. No, that's para. Or actually, it would be re for whoever these guys are. And I guess what I'm going to have to do is pull up a list standings that actually has their name. Uh, a 10-year sponsorship deal. Wow. Through 2031. Jesus. So I guess re is from re, and then pa is from pa, from our name. And that's how they get the... Uh, right there that's how they get the uh, derby name that's not original but that's okay uh, finances are okay average ticket price five bucks icons favored personnel uh, I don't know who the last head coach was uh, Julio Sergio and he was here for a little over two years won the league once two cup wins where is he now so he has gone to uh, Goyas Esporte Club, the Goyas Sport Club. They are first division defending, uh, not defending champs, but they are, well, <laughs> they just got relegated, yeah? So they'll be coming back down, so we'll be playing them next season. Good on him. I guess he figures they're going to be a little better suited to get up back up to the first division right away. But that's strange that he would leave. So that's Julio Sergio, and he is their favorite personnel. So, yeah, he kind of stuck it to him, didn't he? Wow. And uh, let's see, what else we got? News uh, hired. They were looking at Romario from Nacional. in Brazil that's not national that we that we were just uh, dealing with uh, we've already looked at that um, senior affiliate is CEC and uh, we're getting an a, a annual fee of twenty eight thousand dollars so they can send players on loan to us with no pay an annual friendly and a nice little payout. So CEC, I believe, were the defending champs, yes? Uh, yes. So we've got the right club up there. Awesome. And we already looked at that. We kind of looked at that. Cristiano has 20 goals. Is the club record. And league goals is 15. So there we go. All right, guys. Well, again, we are we are at uh, the end of December. Christmas is uh, upon us in a few days. So the league does not start back up again until, well, the Paris State picks up uh, February 1st. So I'm guessing that's what we'll come back for. Uh, so we will see you guys there. Um, I don't know if I'm worried about the Paris State. I guess what we'll do is, all right, so the transfer window opens in about a week and a half. Yeah, on, on January 1st. That's when the preseason starts. And we don't have anything else in there. February. So none of that's drawn yet. But anyway, I'll see when we come back. They've won the para a lot. Being that it's our first matches, I'll probably come back for that. But I'll evaluate that as I get closer. If I just feel like that'll be, you know, a, a Carabao Cup type thing, I may just go through that and get to know the team and then uh, come back for the start of the season and then go through transfer news. So anyway, next episode will be one of those two things. Thanks for checking it out. And let me know what you think of the move, the club. I know there's not a whole lot on the uh, roster or anything. Uh, I will pull the squad up uh, just in case. Uh, we'll sort them by position. And it's a pretty small roster, just one extra player. Uh, I need to go in and look at the rules. I don't know what their rules are for uh, uh, foreign players. 
uh, or anything like that. Uh, not sure if all these guys, no, they're on loan from BDG. He's on loan. So yeah, looks like we got quite a few loanies. I don't know how many of them are from our affiliate, however. So anyway, thanks for checking this one out, guys. We will be back in Brazil next episode. See ya. Bye.